Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here, back with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for August 30th, 2024. So here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. It is sure a busy period getting underway right now in the Atlantic and also in the Gulf of Mexico. We have three areas to watch right now. Unbelievable. We have an area to watch off the Texas coast towards Louisiana, bringing a lot of showers, thunderstorms, and some gusty winds. Then we have another area to watch over the um, central main development region. This is moving into the Windward Islands over the next couple of days and then eventually into the Caribbean where it might develop into our next system. And then lastly, we have another system also out here just to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands. This also has a chance of developing. So three different areas to watch in today's update. But we're only going to spend most of our time on one of these disturbances, which is the one headed towards the Caribbean, because this one's going to probably be a long tracker and a bit of a problem once it gets into that basin. Here's a zoomed in view on our GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery on our disturbance moving towards the Windward Islands. We're going to talk a lot about this in today's video, and if there is time, we will be talking about our disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico off the Texas and Louisiana coasts, since that is somewhat of a threat of development. But right now, zooming in, we have easterly winds to the north of the system. We have westerly winds to the south of this entanglement of the monsoon trough that is still attached here off of Africa. Will the, any vorticity spin off from this and become our next system? There is still a lot of variability here because, again, this has not detached from our intertropical convergence zone. And I can show you that clearly here on our blue marble Zoom Earth satellite imagery where we can customize and zoom in on these type of features. So there's a couple of futures to point out here. Of course, we got some mid and upper level rotation over our wave pocket. That's the deeper convection. But we also have another area of vorticity kind of right over here as well. So the problem that models are having a hard time with is figuring out which area will become more dominant. Does this area become more dominant? Or does this area over here become more dominant? One could even argue the one to the southwest of our, or more towards the west of our area of our speculation of better vorticity could spin up over here where I have the arrow pointing. And if that developed, this could end up much further south than what models previously thought. But if the eastern wave envelope here tries to spin up, this could develop pretty quickly as this tries to rotate around and there is a merger that could happen in the next two to three days. Until that happens though, we're seeing a lot of wild outcomes on a lot of our global models. And in such a way, the NHC has lowered their chances on this system to 40%. And you can see that clearly reflected here on the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, indicating a medium chance a 40% that's down from 50%, but I don't want you all to get focused at, oh, they lowered their chances by 10%, which means there's a lesser chance of this developing. When we look at the 12Z model runs this afternoon, you'll see that this may not last forever, and they still might up their chances again once this becomes a more coherent system. Again, the problem here is that the system is elongated. There is no closed off vort, vort max. And one area, again, suspecting would be the eastern side of this wave pocket versus that western side. And models are really having a hard time. In fact, if I'm having a hard time picking things out, maybe the models are going to even have a more tougher time at picking things out. So now the question really remains and is very murky and hard to predict is how will this storm look like? And how will it evolve over the next couple of days on approach to these windward islands? A lot of people asking me questions uh, in yesterday's video. Is this going to be a storm? Is this going to be a hurricane? Is this going to be a depression? 
We really don't know yet because, again, models are still a very unstable on where which each of these Vort Maxes will actually shape up and become the dominant one. Until we get a very coherent circulation, we're going to see a lot of bouncing around with the models and a lot of downtrends and uptrends, side trends and left trends, this and that, right? So looking at our latest European model, these are all the 12Z model guidance that I have in today's update package. And so when we go forward in time here by Monday morning, Monday late morning, we can see that the circulation here is not closed. This is still an open wave, but pretty sharp here We where we do have southwesterly winds on the southeastern side, where we have northeasterly winds happening on the northwestern side of the wave envelope. This is going to be passing over Dominica as well as Martinique um, over, the, say, the next two or three days. So this would be Monday early afternoon time frame for September the 2nd. And then it exits those islands by the time we go into Monday afternoon into Monday evening. And then could get close to Puerto Rico with winds of 20 to maybe 30 miles an hour. And you can see that there with strong winds. So in other words, you don't need a depression, storm, or hurricane to bring impacts this go around. The impacts will spread pretty far away from the circulation. Anything in green here is winds of 20 miles an hour or greater, and those wind gusts could be anywhere between 30 to even 40 miles an hour. And just a quick look at the precipitation here on the European model, there's also going to be quite a bit of rainfall for some of these islands, perhaps on the order of about an inch to maybe a couple of inches. So yes, those are impacts. Rain and wind are a type of impact that a storm brings, even so it's not a possessed closed circulation. So now what does the GFS model show us? Well, this has been a bit more unfortunate news. The GFS now seems to kind of be a little more locked into the fact that the system does have some vorticity here. When I mean by that, you have faster. Now taking a look at the GFS model here, not as significant as a European model, but still nevertheless, still bringing 20 to 24 mile an hour winds throughout the day on Monday. And what I mean by some vorticity going on down here, we have faster wind here and slower wind down here. And so when you kind of take out the net value, we actually do get vorticity that spins uh, throughout kind of a section here of the storm. And that's gonna be moving over Guadalupe, Martinique, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis up here to the north, as well as some of these other islands. So just keep that in mind. Even so, this is not a closed circulation. There are impacts that, of course, do occur with these tropical waves. Tropical wave or not, here I come, in other words. So now, the Canadian model, a little more aggressive, all right? Uh, not as aggressive as it could be, um, showing again the same thing with winds 20 to 30 miles an hour. That's pretty strong here. And this would be moving over some of these islands. In this case, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as actually Trinidad and Tobago down here. You got Bar uh, Barbados. You got some of these other islands over here, as well as Grenada. Just keep in mind, you're going to get a lot of impacts perhaps with this, even so it's not a tropical depression or a storm. Nevertheless, you're going to get, or nevertheless, getting 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. And last up on our lineup here for these islands is the Icon model. What does that model actually show? Pretty much um, a more slower outcome with this. Looks like now Tuesday morning. So the European model, so just in reference, Tuesday morning, the disturbance is over here, okay, over the northeastern, Gulf, um, not Gulf, the northeastern Caribbean. Okay, this is for September 3rd. Now, if we go literally to the same time frame and we go back a little bit of frame, you can see the difference. The icon is over here. So the euro continues to be faster and the icon continues to be slower. So nearly a day time frame difference here. Does this impact you Monday morning or Tuesday morning? That remains to be seen. But Nevertheless, there is going to be impacts still with winds, strong uh, rain showers, and strong um, surf as well. Man, I got my words mixed up. L big surf, perhaps, strong winds, and heavy rainfall. There we go. And you can see there, winds as high as 30 miles an hour. That's near tropical depression force. And once this 
moves uh, well away from these islands and to the south of Puerto Rico, this has an opportunity of strengthening, which now we will get into the next part of this video. So now that we talked about the windward islands, who is going to get impacted? When are you going to get impacted by the heaviest rainfall? Again, the time frame right now is Monday morning through Tuesday afternoon. Keep that block in mind. This could get later. This could trend earlier. But for right now, what we do have is impacts. And right now, we're looking at marginal to moderate impacts due to wind, surf, and heavy rainfall for these islands. So keep that in mind. So now, European model, beyond the windward islands in Puerto Rico we go, will this strengthen on approach to the northwestern Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico? I have a lot of viewers that are watching this video in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, and even the Bahamas, and all the way up here, perhaps towards the Carolinas. That the reason why you all are watching this is you all are curious, and that's why we are going to follow this storm a little closely. And so on the European model, it doesn't do much over the next five days. It reminds me of Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian looked very anemic through this portion of the Caribbean. But as we go forward in time, once this system really gets close to Jamaica, which by the way, there is Jamaica right there, that is a formidable system on this model actually. That is quite strong, bringing tropical storm force winds to that island. And then guess what? We got the Grand Cayman Islands, these two islands here. The, this is the sister islands. This is the main island, Grand Cayman that is. And we can see winds of about 40 to 50 miles an hour, but that's not it. On the European model, this continues to organize and strengthen it on approach to perhaps the Yucatan Peninsula. And then eventually it goes into the Gulf where does Texas get impacted? Does this bend back to the west or does this turn to hit Florida? That remains to be seen. And until we get a coherent circulation, until we get more consistency amongst our models, we really don't know where and when and how this is going to all evolve in the Gulf. But one thing for sure, we have some signals that are not looking good. Perhaps anything from a low-end tropical storm to perhaps even a low-grade hurricane in or even a major hurricane perhaps. I shouldn't be going that far into this, but the background state could certainly favor that. The GFS model is also fairly consistent on this. Now, of course, on the 12Z run, it is not showing a whole lot here. I mean, you would probably argue enough that, geez, where's our system? The GFS is not showing anything. But look at the more important thing is even so it doesn't show much in the Caribbean at the end of its uh, at the end of its uh, journey into the Caribbean here, the northeastern side or northwestern side. We have winds of about 30 to 40 miles an hour. Then look what happens. A inner core tries to develop here, and this clips, this strikes, barely strikes the western tip there of Cuba, okay, and then the island of youth there. And then watch what happens. This system really gets going as it approaches the big bend of Florida. This is not a good situation. These are winds of about 100 miles an hour. This is a Category 2 hurricane on approach. Now, this is a 10-day forecast. And just to show you how inconsistent this is, if we look at the 06Z model run, it was way down here coming off the Yucatan Peninsula. And then on the 0Z run, it was not even there. So there is a lot of wiggle room here, but on the latest run, the Canadian does have this, or the GFS, excuse me, getting my words mixed up here, of a hurricane, and we have one more model to show you, and that is even the Canadian model. So let's go over to that model, and I'll show you here clearly with what we're dealing with. You can see the Canadian is way down here in the um, in the Bay of Campeche, or Bay of Campeche, there in the Gulf. But if we look at yesterday's 12Z run, it was way over here, over Cuba, and then moving into the Gulf, where it could very much intensify fairly explosively. And then looking at the Icon model, same deal right here. If we go back to the 12Z run, you can see what that system looks like. That looks pretty formidable there, uh, impacting perhaps the Haitian Peninsula in a little over seven 
days or so. So again, a lot of uncertainty here in the fall forecast. The rainfall forecast also remains a bit murky down here in the Windward Islands, but latest sinking is anywhere between one to two inches. Some of these islands could get up to maybe three or four inches locally due to orographic effects. That includes for the western or eastern tip of Jamaica, where you might get locally more rainfall. Keep in mind too, Texas is in trouble with quite a bit of rainfall expected there because of that disturbance. So now, what about the ensemble forecast from the European model? This is this morning's ensemble run forecast showing us that this could still become a tropical storm or a tropical depression on approach to these islands. You can see all the blue colors here on the ensemble indicating winds of at least 30 knots to 40 knots. So that's tropical depression to tropical storm force. And then not really going to intensify in a hurry until it gets into this portion of the Caribbean, perhaps, where this may become our next hurricane. And then some of these models here, some of these pink tracks here indicate major hurricane intensity there's a 939 millibar system there on the ensemble. I'm not saying this will become a major hurricane, but this is giving us an idea that there is a high ceiling for this system with also a huge uncertainty forecast. You can see the cone of uncertainty here, kind of this envelope of potential where this can actually go. And you can see this could theoretically still turn north and impact the Bahamas as it would be if this continues on west into the Bay of Campeche and the Yucatan Peninsula has an equal chance. So anywhere in the Caribbean could get different impacts. If you're in the, if you're in the, the Cuba area, you could definitely get impacted, but if you're in the Yucatan, you could also get impacted. Now, remember this is a 10 day forecast and we do not know where exactly where this is gonna end up being along the Gulf Coast or if it will or not. Okay, so let's not assume that, oh, I'm going to get hit in Florida. Oh, there's a member of 939 millibars hitting New Orleans, Louisiana. That's one member out of 51 different members on the ensemble forecast. So keep that in mind. Looking at our previous ensemble forecast, we can see there was a trend to the west a little bit, but still in the same area here, somewhere in Florida, the Cuba, and in the Gulf of Mexico could still see some significant impacts out of the system. Let's not turn our back on this tropical disturbance just yet. Since there is some time in this video, I'm doing a brief update on our tropical disturbance that is in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. We can see the latest visible satellite imagery here indicating a broad circulation. Lots of thunderstorms today. This has increased in organization since yesterday, since the day before, and this is a very unfortunate situation. Anyone living along the coast here of Cameron, Louisiana, if you're in Beaumont, if you're in Houston, Texas, boy, this could be a very interesting situation as the circulation is just off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. And if this backs up any more and does something like this, as some of the models are indicating, this could theoretically strengthen further under a fairly favorable environment. Look at the outflow here radiating outward in all quadrants. So this is something that we are not going to turn our back on, and we will see if we get anything out of this, such as a tropical depression or a named tropical storm. Right now, it does not look very likely, given that the NHC only has this at a 10 to 20% chance of tropical development, which is good news, but for people that live down here, not so good news with the rainfall that you're expecting to see. But anyways, if you found this video very helpful on that tropical disturbance headed towards the Windward Islands, if you thought I did a very good job, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you haven't already. And also ring the bell notification icon if you do end up subscribing to the channel to get my latest notifications. Shorts feed, I'm working on doing more of that on the channel. And also be sure to also share this video with your family and friends on social media and leave a comment in the section below this video. As always, have a great night and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.